While Jesus was in the garden, it says in Luke 22:43, God sent an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. What do you think about that? In the garden, Jesus was preparing to face the most extreme and ultimate suffering imaginable, being separated from his Father on high. Satan was not about to leave our Lord alone when he was about to embark on the only act that would overcome the devil and its powers, once and for all. This was the trial of the garden. Jesus overcoming the very natural temptation to let this cup pass. It says in Matthew 26, 39, then 42 through 44, that Jesus prayed to have the human strength to endure the brutal beatings and torture of the cross. So you're saying that the moment Jesus relinquished himself into the hands of the sinful man, the atonement had begun? Precisely. The binding, the slapping, the spitting, the mockery, and the scourging all fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah 53, 5. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. With his stripes we are healed. Therefore, the beatings, the torture, the fatigue, the humiliation all culminated in his crucifixion and death on the cross, which were all part of his atonement for our sins. Hebrews 12, 2 tells us that for our sins, Jesus endured the cross, despising the shame. I know from personal study that before Jesus was put upon that cross, only the most vile and abhorrent men hated by society hung on a cross. Anyone who was crucified was seen as the lowest of low. What you just described is a perfect picture of the state of our lives in sin. It should disturb us when religious leaders who call themselves prophets and apostles distract our attention from Christ's suffering atonement on the cross causing people to focus on things that are not right or true. Our church leaders got their inspiration on this doctrine from two passages, Doctrine and Covenants 1918. Which suffering caused myself, even God, the greatest of all, to tremble because of pain, and to bleed at every pore, and to suffer both body and spirit, and would that I might not drink that bitter cup and shrink. And in the Book of Mormon, Mosiah 3, seven, And lo, he shall suffer temptation, and pain of body, hunger, thirst, and fatigue, even more than men can suffer, except it be unto death. For behold, blood cometh from every pore, so great shall be his anguish for the wickedness and the abomination of his people. For one thing, both passages were written or translated by Joseph Smith in 1829-1830. to 1830. During that time, Joseph Smith was still a monotheist. That is why it is God himself who is suffering in those verses. But the point I want to make is that neither reference mentions the Garden of Gethsemane. True. President Nelson, in his October 2018 conference address, said it was in the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus suffered for the sins of the world. Statements like his cause people to miss the cross, to see another Jesus, to discount the meaning of his suffering and revise the truth of Jesus' atoning work. It is what I call a twisting of the scripture. Think of it like this. If Satan can get people to take their eyes off the truth of the gospel and redirect them to something that is a lie, he has won a victory. I'm certain our church leaders wouldn't intentionally attempt to mislead us. If the LDS church is really a restoration, why does the Mormon prophet and apostles create a new narrative for the New Testament? Neither Jesus nor any author of the New Testament claims Gethsemane had anything to do with the atonement of Christ. Instead, there is an abundant number of references to the cross where Christ suffered and died to pay the debt for our sin. The Bible stands on its own, testifying of exactly what his suffering and death on the cross accomplished. Here are some passages I would like for you to read when you have the time. This list of verses can be found at TalkingToMormons.com. Thanks for watching.